Welcome to the demo on data frames, transformations and actions. In this section we are going to learn about more than 17 different data frame methods to perform operations on the dataset. We have discussed in detail about data frames in the previous video. Catalyst optimizer, how it is more efficient than RDD etc. Data frame is a distributed collection of data grouped into named columns. A data frame is equivalent to a relational table in Spark SQL, and can be created using various functions in Spark Session. PySpark.SQL.Spark Session is the main entry point for data frame and SQL functionality. We first create a Spark instance from Spark Session as shown. Spark provides different ways to create a data frame. Reading the file through Spark Session object automatically returns the data as data frame type. Let's read our flight's dataset CSV file with Spark instance. The read CSV method is used to read the CSV. Setting header as true and infer schema as true will return data frame with header and schema information. As shown, we use spark read.csv method to read the CSV. It returns the data frame object df. We can find if it has returned the data frame object with the below command. Now, to see the elements of this data frame, show method is provided. Show method with argument n prints the first n rows to the console. First 20 elements of the data frame are printed in the console as shown. If you want to count the number of rows in the data frame, we can use count function. Similarly, if you want to know the columns in a data frame, use column method. To know the size of the data frame, we use both count and columns as shown. Print schema method prints the schema of the data frame. This is useful in table creation in SQL, Spark data frames. df.print schema prints the schema of the data frame. Let's look into some of the data frame transformations and actions. Cache method is used to persist the data into memory. This speeds up the process of retrieving data frames or RDD for repeated operations. There is also a persists method. This function stores data into hard drive instead of RAM or cache memory. The command is df.cache without arguments. As shown, the display is same as generic data frame show, but internal storage is different. Drop duplicates returns a new data frame with duplicate rows removed. Optionally we can consider only certain columns. The function call in our data frame is df.dropDuplicates. As shown, the duplicate entries from the data frames are dropped. Drop NA returns a new data frame omitting rows with null values. 
dataframe.drop and dataframe na functions.drop are aliases of each other. The function has three parameter arguments. The first parameter is how. How is either any or all. How equals all requires every column in the row to be nan in order to be dropped, as opposed to the default any. Thresh is the second argument. It drops the rows that have less than thresh non-null values. It overwrites how argument. Finally, the last argument is subset. Subset is those columns to inspect for NANs. Let's apply this to our data frame. As shown, I am using option to drop the row if all its elements are NANDs. There are no rows will all its columns as NANDs. The number of rows before and after transformation is same. In the next example, when we replace how with any, it drops all rows in the data frame. This is because every row has at least one nan, so the entire row is dropped. Next we set threshold of 28. This means, drop the rows if they have 28 or less non-null values. Executing the command gives us 9382 rows out of 50k. Significant number of rows got dropped. Finally, a subset is used to specify which columns to consider while dropping the row. We have selected six different columns as a list. We specify how equals any. This means if any of the selected columns are null, then drop the row. Executing this command, returns final row count of around 9k. This brings us to end of part 1. See you in part 2 of data frames.